What is up, guys? We are back with another couple episodes of Going For It. Uh, you will see your first appearance of Mike Spillane in uh, this round of uh, some Going For It podcast. Uh, you'll also see a couple new segments I did with Craig. Uh, we called it Carry On Craig, where Craig kind of just gets on a soapbox and talks about whatever he wants, which is basically just the podcast, but uh, a little more a little more focused from Craig for a couple minutes. And In the Pocket, which is a breakdown of the QBs in that division that we talk about in the offseason, just kind of how we feel about them, rank them, a lot of top fives, all that good stuff. So we have even a little bit of draft talk. So that is what we got going on in going for it at this time. Uh, you guys can hope to see some more content more regularly from us. As you can see, I got my setup finally ready to go. I'm repping my New York Giants. All of this stuff was recorded pre-free agency and pr like right after the J.J. Watt signing. So we don't have anything super duper up to date, but I wanted to release it anyway so you guys could get our takes and see how we're feeling. Uh, that will be coming to a screen near you right now. D. Sean Watson. So you, you are a self-proclaimed Texans fan second because you have seen the start of this franchise. You were around and you got to see them form and, and become a, a team. Look at and you. last week, I, I know stuff. You're brushing uh, up on your Mike week, Spillane history. <laughs> I was reading all the books about you. They all have pop-ups, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> pop-ups are great. Um, so Craig and I got to kind of break it down on Houston last week, and I would be remiss if I didn't give you the opportunity to kind of talk about what you think is going on in Houston other than a mass exodus, because that's apparent. Um, and kind of, we've gotten some more Deshaun Watson information. Maybe it, it's bullshit. Maybe it's fact, but there's three teams that Deshaun Watson has, has been Ooh. linked to personally that he is potentially given three teams to the Texans saying that this is where I'd like to go if you are to trade me. Um, but first, before we get into that, what do you think about everything that's going on in Houston? Dumpster fire. Like, <laughs> there's no other way to describe it. I mean, my, my, here, here's my thing. Okay. Um, and I'm going to have to look at my phone here to do a quick, quick Google search. So bear with me one moment. Um, so. David Culley, hired as the Texans head coach. Mm -hmm. Definitely, you know, a career assistant guy, felt that he was due their time, what have you. That That's all well and good, but I have a big problem with that hire. And that big problem is, frankly, is Eric Bieniemy, And... This is where I'm going to go up on a pedestal. This is going to be the hill that I am more than happy to die on is you have last year. I, I need to go ahead and brush up on my passing statistics 100%. But as far as I remember last year, Deshaun Watson, and I have it confirmed now, Deshaun Watson was number one in the NFL in passing yards. He threw for 33 touchdowns and seven interceptions. And he, uh, I mean, only by like a hundred, less than a hundred yards, he was the number one, number one quarterback. He had over 70% completion percentage, averaged over 300 yards a game, um, was sacked a fair amount, but his quarterback rating was 112. Um, can you refresh my memory? What was the Texans record? Poop. Four and 12. So poop. So you have an opportunity for the quarterback who was number one in passing yardage last year to bring in the offensive coordinator of the number two quarterback in the NFL, who was on the number one team in the NFL. And you hire a guy who instead was a passing game coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens, who, and again, this is where I'm on my high horse, and I, I've done research on this before, which is why I have most of this numbers, most of these numbers in front of me. Lamar Jackson, 22nd in the NFL in passing, as far as yardage goes. Um, not, a not, not, a no, not, not a strength. 
Um, he had uh, 26 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Good numbers. Good numbers. Not anything against that. Very solid. But you're going from a coach who was a run first priority, even in their passing game, to bring into possibly the best pass first offense that he could go to outside of Kansas City. And I just don't understand how you. I'd love to be wrong about this, but I don't understand how you leave the enemy on the table when he's there and like is the perfect coach for your stud quarterback whose best years you are wasting. Yeah, it it's kind of mind blowing that they are willing to to sit on Deshaun from what what it looks like, because Bill O'Brien Again, Craig and I talked about this last week, so I, I don't want to repeat myself if I, if I can help it. But Bill O'Brien has traded two years' worth of valuable first-round picks. I believe they don't have a first-round pick this year, and I nope. believe they don't have a first-round pick next year. I don't even know if they have a second-round pick this year and next year. I'm pretty sure they don't. So your high-end talent, those guys that can come in and make a difference day one and at least you know, slot in – higher on your depth chart than someone you're taking in the fifth and sixth round. The ability to plug those guys in and plug and play is gone. You do not have the ability to put those guys in. And at three, something we're going to talk about in a little bit, when you give us a little bit of a draft breakdown, you're getting your pick of wide receivers. If what's true with the jets and they draft a wide receiver, Jacksonville's probably taking Trevor Lawrence that's two quarterbacks off the board at three. You get your pick of the three stud wide receivers, Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddle, and uh, oh my God, his name just jumped out of my head. Devonta Smith. Yep. You, that's an immediate game changer for someone like Deshaun. And you threw that pick away. And then you fired the guy who made the decision to throw the pick away because you didn't believe in his vision anymore. So you, you've, you've screwed yourself immensely. I mean, if you want to even go further on that, it would have been okay if you had done that, if you hadn't traded away your star wide receiver, like we can <sighs> add that onto it as well, because that's more to the dumpster fire. What are like to quote, quote Taylor Twelman, what are you do? What are we doing? You know, like, what are they doing? You obviously have traded away all this draft capital, which you are right. No first, no second round pick this year. They have neither. They do have a first and second next year um, for now, but we'll see. Wow. Um, all subject to change. Um, but they do have a first and a second next year. But they also. Oh, did they not have a first last year? It might have been year. last year. That's right. Last year. Okay. But then they go ahead and trade deandre hopkins to who was who is debatably one of the uh best wide receivers in the nfl if not the best he was for pennies numbers, on the dollar for yeah, pennies for for david johnson um he was the number three receiver in yards this year actually technically the number two receiver because travis kelsey beats him out by nine yards so he's a tight end you know Christ. um but yeah, dude, like you just give up him because of the fact that realistically by every account of what has come out as to the differences is just that Bill O'Brien didn't fucking like him. Like that's essentially what it comes down to. Like what is this high school? Like I, my thing is you're on the, on the field, but that's your team. That's you go to die for your team, man. And you're just like, nah, like, like We're gonna just throw away together. one of the one of the top three receivers in the NFL. We're just gonna give him away. Like, <laughs> well, all of this to say, the three teams that have come out that Deshaun is, has an interest okay. in are the Miami Dolphins, okay, the New York Jets, okay, and the Carolina Panthers. Breakdown for me. Miami Jets Panthers break down for me what the good and the bad would be of Deshaun going to these locations. So the bad um, for each of them first. So the, the, the bad in uh, New York is that it's the Jets. 
Um, They're still a lot of pieces away from being competitive. Um, They show flashes of being able to hang in there in games right now, but at the end of the day, they're still fundamentally not ready. So there's a lot of rebuilding that needs to do to, to happen there. The bad in Carolina is that you're still dealing with uh, relatively new coaching experience. You know, your Matt Rule only just got through his first year in the NFL and has always been a college coach. So his transition is probably going to be a little bit different um, different than others. Uh, the bad in Miami is the weather, man. Like, you live in Florida. You know the humidity is no fucking joke down here. It's awful. So play, playing every every game in Florida definitely puts a toll on the body. But th- that's the thing is there, there's a lot of positives about Miami. Um, but I, I would say that, like, weapons at all three of them are also a little bit of uh, a con. Because there's not a whole lot of concrete weapons at each team. Um, they have some good pieces and the biggest pro for me as far as weapons is going to be Carolina because watching Deshaun Watson with a healthy Christian McCaffrey just <sighs> sounds like ding, like <laughs> I don't know how to say it aside from uh, 12 to midnight. Yeah. 12 to midnight. Real or six quick. to midnight. You know what I'm saying? Tents have been pitched. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then you also look at some of their receivers. Like they, they have some, some decent like receiving targets there. It's just, can the package that Carolina offers be good enough for them? Like, cause realistically the only other, the, the, the team that I think would make the most sense for him, but couldn't afford the trade would be new Orleans. If Drew Brees decided to call it. Deshaun going to that offense would be ridiculous. It'd be like a cheat code. So give me the pros. What's the pro of going to Miami? The pro of going to Miami is I think that he would pretty much be given the opportunity to call a lot of his own shots. He would be able to be in the front office in the ears of the GM and the head coach if they have money, what they should try and spend it on, what he wants, what he wants to do, how he, they're going to let him have influence over the offense. He's not going to have that as much in Carolina, but that's because they already have some offensive pieces for him to go off of. Like you look at some of what Tua was doing, it, you could tell that it was a lot of scared coaching, whereas Deshaun's going to be like, nah, let me sling it. Like, you know, and, and with New York, who did they hire as their coach again? Sala. I like that a lot. I do like him as a coach. Um, I don't know what their offensive coordinator setup is because obviously Salah is not really going to be involved in that at all, being that he's a big defensive guy. But uh, again, it kind of comes down to the weapons. Like, I don't know who starting wide receivers for the Jets are going to be. Like, I don't think the Jets know who the starting wide receivers for the Jets are going to be. Yeah, because they haven't drafted them yet. Um, <laughs> Unless they, you know, obviously, unless they go ahead and draft capital it away for Deshaun, because let's face it, that's the only way you're getting him is a pre-draft trade where you can go ahead and get that capital from them. Like, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think that the, I have a harder time finding pros for the Jets just because my expectations would be so incredibly low for their first year under a defensive head coach, seeing how they can transform an offense that doesn't have weapons. Okay. What's the pro for the Panthers? Obviously home, but yeah, the pro for the Panthers easily is you're going to be in a, basically a college style offense that is built to put up points and you have a human joystick as a running back, obviously coming off of an injury, you have to hope that he comes back. Well, but if you have Christian McCaffrey and Deshaun Watson, that's fucking fireworks, baby. That's Jersey sales. That's exposure. Like that's y'all making money. Like that's a dynamic duo. That's endorsement deals. When, like when you had Eli and Odell doing the dirty dancing commercial together, like that's good times for everybody. Um, So to me, the most pros lie in Carolina but does a Carolina trade make the most sense for the Texans? Regardless, Deshaun doesn't want to be there, so they might have to bite at some point. But 
I don't know what Carolina offers aside from Teddy Bridgewater, their first first and second round pick, and then something else on top of that. Yeah, three years, you know, three first round picks for Deshaun, which is apparently the Russell asking price, which I yeah. think Russ's, Russ's record is a little more established than Deshaun's. It is. But I think Deshaun can be a little more electric than Russ can. But he can. Deshaun, I would argue back, has had better weapons until Russ got DK. But yeah. if you're if you're putting the same the same bounty for both players, Carolina's losing first round pick for the next three years. That's a tough pill to swallow. It's a tough pill to swallow, especially when you're trying to build a team around him. But this team could conceivably add a piece or two and yeah. be ready to win. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to bring up over the cap real quick, just so that way I can see like what the situations look like for all of those teams see what they potentially have going on right now. I mean, now. I think the Jets have all the money. The I'm Jets pretty sure. do have um, $68 million in cap space. It's gross. The Panthers have $31 million in cap space. Dolphins have about $23 million. So The Dolphins would have to get creative, but I think that also makes them a very big contender in that division. And you then have the Josh Allen, uh, Deshaun Watson shootouts that I think would be Sunday oh, yeah. Night Football like every, every time. Yeah, it'd be it'd be beautiful. It'd be great, great watching, great, great to watch that twice a year. Especially so, if we happen to get one of them up in Buffalo in the snow. Oh, great. <laughs> Good times. Good times. Love snow football. Um, so. Mike, you are sitting in the chair of the general manager as the Miami Dolphins or of the Miami Dolphins. You are being asked for three first round picks for Russell Wilson. You're being asked for three first round picks for Deshaun Watson. Who do you pull the trigger on and why? While Russell is more proven, I do Deshaun because of age and, um, that that's the the main factor is you're going to get more years out of Deshaun and you're also going to have him tied into his contract for longer. So Deshaun just re-signed a new contract yep. and I believe Russ is going to be due for an extension soon. Yeah, I think next year, maybe the year after. So yeah, if there's going to be new money that's going to have to be laid out on a Russell Wilson contract you have to realize that that's now probably going to exceed $50 million a year. Thank you, Mr. Mahomes. So if the asking price for him is going to balloon that high, I'd rather go ahead and get the guy that you can get for less money who's younger for four years before you have to go ahead and get him on a new deal. I love it. I agree. I think Deshaun has a, has a very nice future. I think Russ is – if Miami had a couple pieces and looked like they were a quarterback away from winning – tomorrow to being able to compete with the chiefs tomorrow, then I would say Russ is your guy. But being that I still think that they need a couple pieces. I think they need to reinforce that offensive line. I think they need another pass catcher, whether it's a tight end or a wide receiver that is going to put up some gaudy numbers. Then, then I'm thinking, okay, you guys can go with the chiefs, but until that point, I, 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 tend to agree with you and I think Deshaun's going to win you more shootouts than Russ will yeah and the other thing that I'll add on to that is that's also coming from me being a huge Russell Wilson fan ever oh yeah since I love Russ. I I mean I don't know if I if you know this story but I actually saw him play while I was at UCF um NC State played my freshman year at UCF and he was the QB of NC State before he took got drafted into baseball and then came back to Wisconsin to finish his collegiate career before getting drafted to the NFL. So my freshman year, I saw Russell Wilson play. He actually played like shit, but um, <laughs> he's like 10 of 31 or something like that. Like awful That's numbers bad. against a bad UCF team, um, which is kind of even more hilarious that he went on to be probably the best long ball in the NFL currently. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's a beautiful yeah. ball.